I was recently contacted by a company and they wanted me to help with gaining some more power in their engine. Now this is a pretty unusual application and due to uh, space restrictions the cylinder is mounted in kind of an unusual way, at least for larger two-stroke engines. So instead of the normal orientation where the exhaust port is in line with the crank rotation, in this engine the cylinder is oriented 90 degrees off from the normal position. At first I thought this doesn't make much of a difference, it's just oriented in uh, a different way and uh, maybe there are some issues with wear on one side of the cylinder as combustion is kind of not pushing the piston uh, with the crank but side to side there's not that much room for movement this way compared to this way that's maybe not a problem but then suddenly I uh, realized that for the cylinder to be mounted this way there had to be a closed piston pin. Without it, there couldn't be a rear transfer. And looking at the castings of the cylinder for their engine, there clearly was a third transfer. So very likely they were running a closed piston pin, so not an open-ended thing like this, but with one or both sides closed. Or maybe even a piston with a dead end uh, pinhole. So it's not bored through, but it's closed on one side and open. So you push the pin in from one side and there's only one side with a clip. Then a few days later, I was on my way home from work in my car. And suddenly it dawned on me that having the cylinder oriented 90 degrees off axis with the piston pinhole passing over the exhaust port really does have its uh, benefits or one large benefit. I also remembered seeing Emot Racing. Check out their site. They're the ones who provided me with the rotary valve and uh, a driver. Great stuff from Emot Racing. But anyways, I remember they were experimenting with an engine with the cylinder mounted 90 degrees off axis. Like in the engines I just had made myself familiar with. Now the reason I thought they were doing this or experimenting with this was to have the inlet, because they were running a rotary valve, the inlet symmetric to the transfers. Well now I actually think because that I don't think that matters too much, but now I think there's another reason Ammo Racing was or are experimenting with this stuff. Let me explain. If you're running a wide exhaust port, dual or a triple port, or single for that matter, if, uh, if it was possible, you can't go to 100% of bore, which is ideal for maximum exhaust area, without the port communicating with the piston pin. Now, if it was just the exhaust communicating through the pin, so side to side, that wouldn't be a problem. But here's the problem. There's transfer ports too. And now every time the piston passes over the transfer and 
wired exhaust port, you have communication between the transfer and the exhaust, or the crankcase and the exhaust port. Not a good thing. Now, it is common in uh, racing engines to close off the pin with laser welding or um, some special uh, plastic uh, covers. The problem is these covers have to be flush with the piston because even if you just close off the hole in the pin there will be communication between the transfer and the exhaust in the small cavity between the face here and the actual pin because of the circle application. Now to the point. Having the piston running 90 degrees off from what it normally does, like this, you would only have to close off one side and having the closed side flush with the piston face really is not of importance because there is only communication between the exhaust port. There is no communication actually. If you close off one side, preferably the exhaust side, then there will be no communication between anything. What this means is by running the cylinder in this orientation, not only can you benefit from having the intake flow symmetrical to both transfers, you can also run an exhaust port that is 100% of bore, which is the best or which will give you most area. Going over that won't give you any more power, but going to 100% is the ideal without any special pins or, uh, or stuff. All you need is a small cap placed between a slightly shorter wrist pin and the circuit. Can probably be made of aluminium or steel, whatever. Something that can withstand the heat. That's all that's required and will stay in there. This might help me push the SPX past 25 horsepower at the wheel, <laughs> Some, someday. Okay, that's all I uh, have for today. I have some stuff I need to do. Mainly, I have to package and send away a bunch of uh, our dino cards. They arrived Friday and uh, I'm going to ship out all the ordered ones on Monday. Thanks for watching. See you next time.